Like don't go in with an exceptional high expectation. Don't expect Shakespeare, <laughs> modern Shakespeare, I don't know. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope this angle is better. The lighting is just still not the best. Hopefully I'll be able to make it slightly better. So today I want to do just like sit very comfortably and want to do a February wrap up of what I read, what I enjoyed, what I hated, which there were a few very disappointing reads. Although it was a short month, I was pretty productive in terms of the amount of books I read. I was very actively involved in a few like online book discussion groups. So that really encouraged me to read more books and all that jazz. But before I jump into uh, talking about the books that I liked and disliked, I actually do not physically own any of the books, which this is all an illusion. Most of the books I listen to audiobook and I borrowed from the library, um, even with the physical copies, so I've already returned them uh, right after I finished so that more people can enjoy them. So the first book that comes to mind that I read, and I think it was the first one that I finished in February, was Midnight Library. I think it was one of the books that was awarded as the Goodreads top favorites for 2020 for the fictional section, I think. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Essentially, it's about this library that people enter during near-death experience and you get to discover through the books of options how your life would turn out to be if you had made different choices throughout your life. So for example, if you had chosen to adopt this dog, what would your life to, like, turn out to be like? Obviously this like revolves around one singular woman and she was struggling with um, mental disorders or I think she was diagnosed with depression, I don't remember specifically, but it was a very like a rewarding and enjoyable experience. Obviously the topic is slightly heavy because it does deal with uh, mental, mental illness and death and suicide, so those are definitely the trigger warnings that I'm gonna put out there. If I can find more, I'll put it down as well. Lots of things in her life that has led her to be where she was. In her mind, she wanted to live a different life and make different choices and uh, believing that that would have turned out better, which actually wasn't necessarily the case once she explored that library. And it was just a very heartwarming, thought-provoking read that I highly enjoy and I highly recommend if any of you are interested in this kind of thing. And because I have the memory of a goldfish. I'm going to look at what I have like noted um, in terms of the books I've read. The next books that I read again is a five star. Oh, that one was a five star read for me for sure. The first book of February. That was a great start of the month. But the next one is also a five star read, which is Anxious People. The one who also uh, wrote the very famous The Man Called Uva, which surprisingly I did not enjoy. Well, actually, not that surprised but I did not enjoy it whatsoever. It's actually in my building's condo, my, yeah, my building's book club pick for next month, for the month of, no, for the month of April. And I didn't enjoy it because I just, I personally just cannot connect with elderly. But I read that book in January, so in February, I read Anxious People, I decided to give it another try. I think it tied very closely with Midnight Library, like when competing for the Goodreads Award, and I loved it. The concept to me was not necessarily the most intriguing. Um, essentially, it's this bank robber who held a bunch of people hostage, and of course, under hostage, you're extremely anxious, so you get to discover their life stories, and it goes kind of back and forth between the timelines and you get to discover why that bank robber decided to rob the bank and it had a very dry humor to it and I listened to it on audiobook of course and the narrator did a great job like depicting different distinguishing different voices and different characters and for me especially there was this woman called Zara who's extremely wealthy but she had such a dry sense of humor and extremely arrogant. She, you know, is self-made and all of that. So she doesn't, she kind of looked down upon all of those people, but her characters really grew and I personally could really relate to all the things that she said. So I thought that was a really interesting and just like heartwarming, warming read as well because you get to discover how like the people really bond together and it was just so cute. I don't want to spoil anything, but it just, 
it definitely is not what you would have expect from this type of situation and I thought it was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful read and personally, even if you had a hard time or did not enjoy the Menka Uva as much as everyone else did, you still you might um, be surprised with this one. Alright, moving on to the next one and that is when my reading experience just completely plummeted and went downhill for the rest of this month. The next few actually read it with my um, online like buddy. A uh, shout out to Sumitra. <laughs> okay, probably saying your name wrong. As well as Lola, we're both um, like creating this. We created this uh, online buddy uh, group that we read a few books that you know we've been meaning to read, but kind of just left it on the shelf for a while. And the next one is The Diviners, which I know is a very popular book among the BookTube community, and it's a series, so I thought I would give it a try. <sighs> I had a, such a hard time reading this book. I listened, I had both I had both the physical and the audiobook and I would just like keep on counting. I was like, what is it over? Like why is this so long? To me, I don't think any YA fantasy needs to be that long. I have I feel very strongly about excessively long books. I just don't think that's necessary at all. And it does not enhance your reading experience whatsoever and I felt there was like a lot of fillers that the author was trying to explore too many storylines and too many concepts within this novel but none of them were intriguing. I didn't like any of the characters. To be honest, if you ask me what happened in the book, I can't even tell you. There was some sort of serial murderer and people with um, special abilities, like children with special abilities and it's kind of their story is trying to solve it and it made biblical religious uh, references which I understand was the hype for a while I think it was back like a few years back this book when it was published so maybe during that time it was like intriguing but I besides the Da Vinci Code I really don't care about any of the other novels to explore this topic which Da Vinci Code I highly recommend as well as the movie but moving on to the next one which it's so shocking that I really did not enjoy because when I looked at the synopsis, when I heard everyone's reviews, raving reviews, like all five stars, all extremely intrigued and excited, and on the cover of it is amazing, the plot, everything about it just seemed like a five star read for me, but at best I would say it was like a three star. I'll link my Goodreads down below so I can you can see what exactly I felt while I was going through that reading experience. And the next book is These Violent Delights by Chloe Kwong. First of all, I think she's amazing to be able to produce a book at such a young age. I think she's still in university or maybe master's or like she's extremely young. So, you know, good for her. There were a lot of potential to the book. Essentially, it is a 1920s Chinese retelling of Romeo and Juliet. So we get gang, um, opposite gang member, uh, we got a fantasy twist to it where there's this monster that's turning people ill and crazy and people are trying to find the mystery and discover what's really going on behind it. So I, I like the writing style. I think it was good. I just thought, first of all, I couldn't really feel their chemistry. They're supposed to be Romeo and Juliet. But besides the name, I think it's Roma and Juliet. I didn't really feel that chemistry between them. It just felt absent. And it was, I really don't like one of those characters, um, the female character, where it seems like she's super, super strong mentally and inside and out. And then you get to discover her more and it's just all a sham and all just a facade. And that's how I felt about Juliet, where I think the author aimed to create a very strong, self-sufficient, independent, strong-willed, a uh, woman or female character who was in her teenage year uh, trying to take over the gang and solve mystery and all that. I just felt like it's all talks. It's all like very on the surface level. But when, I don't know, when you like see the character more, she's extremely, to me, she felt very indecisive and just wishy-washy. I just, I did not like any of the characters. The plot twist, I don't know if it was supposed to be a plot twist, didn't really surprise me nor did I care so I don't know I didn't enjoy it I, I know a lot of people did so don't let me 
change your mind if you were planning to read it but just like don't go in with an exceptional high expectation don't expect Shakespeare <laughs> modern Shakespeare I don't know okay so the next one that I've read that really pulled me out of the slump and the dis disappointments which was uh, by yourself the fucking lilies I don't know if I need to answer that I forgot their name but it was written by this woman who's career-wise very successful at a very young age in Hollywood but mentally extremely unstable suffer from a lot of anxieties and um, it's her guide it's a nonfiction so it's her guide on how to overcome the anxiety through different coping mechanism her experience with overcoming a lot of the problems coming from her upbringing her family as well as just her relationship with others and just a lot of great advices for me personally and she again brought up the point and the importance of journaling so I have started this as she advised so every morning I write down I forgot this morning but every morning I try to do a gratitude list so I'll write down 10 things um, and one thing I sort of modified a little is that I not only write things that I'm grateful they already own, I try to manifest things like for example I'm grateful for a productive and positive day so that's my aim for the rest of the day and I'm already putting it out in the universe. I know this sounds extremely cliche but I think it's also just a really great way to start your day. Overall I think I really like her tone. I think she's the, the author so one that narrated the audiobook, so I really enjoyed it. There are obviously sections that I don't feel necessarily relatable. Relatable, for example, she had a very romantic, very enjoyable experience in Paris, which when I went there, I did not like it whatsoever. But you know, to each their own. There are definitely sections that really just like shed some light on issues that I'm like fighting with internally, and especially because of COVID and stay at home and all of that. I definitely feel there are moments in my life that I feel extremely unhappy with a lot of things so it really helps to bring some clarity to how I feel and how I should sorry this is my discord probably my book discussion pals so yeah no I, I highly recommend if you are just looking for a good self-help but in a more like just you know cheerful upbeat don't give a crap kind of tone that I thought it was a really enjoyable read I think I give it a four star and the following right after was one of my, I would say so far, my top reads of 2021, hands down. And it's The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Kluna. Could be wrong, I totally don't know much about this author. It's essentially this novel about um, a group of magical children in a orphanage. And we got a caretaker going to investigate whether that orphanage is doing a good job protecting the children and protecting their welfare and the caretaker whose name is Arthur I think absolutely is he did such a wonderful job bringing up the children to teach them values and self-acceptance and the children are the cutest most adorable beings I think they're all under 10 and they all have special abilities one of them is like a gnome a little female gnome with beard one that like all he wants to do is to become a bellman. Another one, his father is supposed to be Lucifer, so his name is Lucy, and he's such a bad little boy, like naughty little boy on the surface, but inside he's like got the purest, cutest heart. Because all of the kids are like, wow, that's really creepy. I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on out there. But I just, I highly recommend, I'm making everyone in my life reading that book. I'm recommending to my book club, like everyone needs to read this. It felt like a huge, warm cozy hug and it was the audiobook is amazing the voices were like well distinguished and super adorable i had a fabulous time like i flew through the book and i just wanted it to never end i want a movie i want a tv show i want everything possible relating to that story i just want more um so i highly highly recommend the book five stars hands down so the next one is also a really amazing read but it was more of um, a heartbreaking story and it's called The Astonishing Life of After. So first of all, I think I personally enjoyed it more just because I understand Chinese. There are a lot of Chinese references to it. It's written by a Taiwanese author. It's a magical realism story of this girl who discovered that her mom committed suicide. So her mom has battled with 
depression her whole life. So it's her going back to Taiwan to try to find her mother's roots. And she believes her mother has turned into this big red bird. And the thing that I like about this is mostly the writing style is absolutely breathtaking. She feels her emotions through colors and her best friend. Um, he's a guy and he always asks like what color are you and she would pick a color to describe her current mental state or um, emotion which I think was the most romantic gesture ever I don't know I just think it's a really cute thing that they do she's an artist so she's incredibly talented so it's her story of reconciliating with her grandparents who she's never met before because her mother had ended that side of the relationship and also she reconnected with her father better through this really challenging and turbulent time but just wanted to heads up and say that it's extremely heartbreaking it really broke my heart and because it was written is magical realism and is written in such a dreamy magical way it made it feel even more sad when everything came to an end. I don't know, I like cried a lot and I don't usually cry from English novels. So those were like amazing, amazing reads in this month. And then we went downhill again. I read The Unbound, which is a sequel to The Archived, written by V. Schwab, and I absolutely loved Addie LaRue, like most people I think. And I actually enjoyed The Archived, which is this world that ghosts are called history. They're people with special abilities so they can see them and then they like try to archive the history so they don't run off and I don't know destroy the the world where uh, people who are alive live in. I'm um, not doing a great job, but essentially it's like this little girl. She's been assigned this role to try to catch those running wild ghosts, which are mostly younger. They're not adults yet, so they're easier to handle. So it's her story afterwards. I don't. Anyways, I, I just don't think the second book was as strong as the first one, I didn't really feel... With V. Schwab's books, that's how I feel. I never really like any of the characters. The world building, the plot, the story, and you know, all the concepts I enjoy because they're all very creative and interesting, but I never liked any of the characters, which if the story is any less enjoyable or any less intriguing for me, that just really lowered the overall enjoyability and reading experience for me, so that's the case with the second book in the series. I kind of expect, expected more things happening, which to me, it didn't. So I just kind of flew through that audiobook and just put it aside and like, you know, I'm done with the series. And I think that's, so far, there are only two books. I don't know if she's gonna release more, so I don't know if I'm gonna pick it up anytime soon if she does release a new one, but so far I wouldn't highly recommend. And the next one, to wrap it up, another, <laughs> which, okay, it's, it's Legend Born, and I know it's like, everyone loved it. Honestly, I would say mostly my fault because I joined the online discussion. I wanted to enjoy join the Vintage Book and Wine, Wine of Us, Books and Wine, <laughs> club online discussion situation hosted by Blake, Ace, Tiana, and Matthew. And I like left it to the last minute and finished this 18 hour audiobook in three days, which I would say dominant, predominantly like 12 to 15 hours was read the last day. The online discussion took place at 11 p.m. I finished it right at 10.40 p.m. at like two times the audio speed and I'm just like a bit overwhelmed to be honest. I gave it a 3.5 star but it felt like a two and a half to three stars read just because I rushed through it and again I have the same issue with this book as it is just too long for a first book and for a YA fantasy, but that's just my personal opinion. So the storyline essentially follows this girl whose mother has passed away and then she discovers she has a special ability, um, you know, this whole magic system in that world. So she, you know, meets people, fights demons. I literally just finished it two days ago and I can't remember. Essentially, my issue with the books that it's, it felt a bit too long and there are a lot of side characters within the book that I was curious about and something happened to them and it's pretty important in the end but because there's so little uh, written about them I didn't really care for whatever happened to them but I should so I felt like that wasn't explored as much and because I think it's loosely taken reference from the whole Arthur Merlin thing and I don't know anything about that so that kind of lowered my enjoyability to this book as well. The main character 
Brianna. I uh, she was okay. Like I mean, I didn't I didn't have an issue with her. I just didn't really care for her romance with the guy. Obviously, there is a romance, and it felt very insta love, puppy love, love at first sight kind of thing. But she kind of like went all in with him, and then like got very physical and. I don't know, like emotionally attached, and then she pulled back, and then she went back. It just felt like a seesaw. <laughs> Cute shoot as solo. Their chemistry didn't feel natural. I couldn't really feel any of the the pull between the two characters. I don't know. I just I, I didn't really enjoy it as much. This is my unpopular opinion, which is kind of the theme for this month's reads, including these final delights, the diviners. The, archive, the Unbound by I don't know if it's like widely, widely discussed on the booktube community as well as The Legendborn. They were all kind of disappointing reads, but then I discovered the house in the, the house in the Cerulean Sea that just made up for all of it. So I really enjoyed that one. I hope this gives you some ideas of books you might want to look into or books that you have been interested in picking up. Um, so maybe this will encourage you or I don't know, rekindle that passion for reading again so i really hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching please don't forget to subscribe thumbs up and all of that and i'll see you next time